All right, so uh, yeah, welcome to our talk um, about automating cookie consent and GDPR violation detection. This was joint work with Karl Kubicek, Carlos Cotrini, and David Basin from ETH Zurich. And so to begin, well, it is, I am sure it is widely known and confirmed by past research that cookies are used to track users online. And well, this commonly happens without the user even being aware of it. So to get the situation under control, the European Union has passed laws that require websites to notify users and request consent before data can be processed. And because of this, uh, many websites today now display these kinds of consent notices, like you can see here, which come in various forms like uh, banners, pop-ups, and they can range from simple notifications to very complex uh, menus, where, which are very confusing also often for the user. And there, the user can consent to various different third parties. Now, what the, G, like what the EU law actually requires is that, so there are two main laws, which are the e-privacy directive and the general data protection regulation, or GDPR. And the e-privacy directive states that all data collection requires consent, except that which is strictly necessary, such as, for example, authentication cookies, which are, of course, necessary to make the, a website work. And moreover, the GDPR defines the conditions that are needed for valid consent. So consent needs to be freely given and unambiguous, which means that users cannot, should not be forced to, uh, to give consent. And moreover, a website cannot impl implicitly assume that when the visitor browses a website that they, uh, that they have also automatically consented to data collection. Moreover, consent needs to be specific and informed. Uh, consent notices must state the reasons for data collection, and they must separate the data collection into clearly defined purposes. Like it is done on this example, they are yeah, separated into different categories. Now, if these regulations are not followed, uh, of course, websites may uh, face large fines from authorities, but past research has actually shown that this does not that non-compliance is still widespread despite this. Um, a significant number of websites create tracking cookies before the user is even able to give consent. And some track users even when the consent is denied. On top of this, dark pat patterns are used by, uh, by websites uh, to influence new users into accepting all types of data collection, even if this is not really in the user's best interest. So all of this evidence shows us that a solution is needed that doesn't require users to trust the websites. And our main research goal was to find a way to enforce cookie consent directly in the client. And our solu solution to achieve this goal was a browser extension, which we call Cookie Block. The key idea of our extension is to look at the cookie data, uh, so sort of the actual cookie that is on the website, we predict the purpose using a machine learning model and then decide on removing the cookie based on whether the user actually consents to the purpose that the classifier predicts for the cookie. And to implement this, we first gathered a large data set of cookies with two different web crawlers. We then analyzed the cookie structure to extract numerical features from them to train a classifier. Uh, we, yeah, we then train a classifier and evaluate the model. And finally, this is integrated into the browser extension. Now, for data collection, the main challenge was to find data sources with cookies that were actually labeled with purposes. So if you simply crawl for cookies, you don't actually have this information. Luckily, we know from the GDPR regulations that there exist consent notices that that already contain this information, so because of the purpose limitation. Now, we target pop-ups that are implemented on websites by so-called consent management platforms, and these are third parties that host the code and the content that is uh, used by the consent notice. And uh, well, we selected the CMPs CookieBot, OneTrust, and Termly because these had all the information these specific four categories that we needed to train our model. So these categories are strictly necessary functionality, analytics, and advertising. 
Um, to retrieve this data, we, as I said, we implemented two different web crawlers. The first one simply identifies whether the website we target uses a, one of the supported CMPs. So as input, we gave it six million domains from the, from the Tranco list, and the crawler identified uh, 37 and a half thousand domains that one had one of those CMPs. The second crawler emulates real browsers, and it uses the OpenWM, uh, Open WPM framework as a basis. It extracts the declarations from the consent notice and also the real cookies through browsing. And this was successful on 30,000 websites. Now here you can see the results of the second crawl. We found 2.2 million cookie declarations in total and on, uh, uh, approximately 600,000 uh, observed cookies. And so to get the training data set, of course, we had to match the, the declarations, which had the purpose with the real cookies, which we, you, uh, for this we used the name and the domain of the cookie. And this gave us roughly 323,000 co uh, training, training data samples. Now, interesting to note here is actually that we have many more declarations than observed cookies, which may be a limitation of our crawler. It cannot fully interact with the website, so maybe not all cookies are generated. And at the same time, however, m many of the uh, real cookies that we found on the website were never actually declared in the consent notice. So this could be actually a uh, potential violation of the GDPR because the websites do not provide information on those cookies. And we will actually look at this later in our analysis. And another interesting thing is that when we look at how this, uh, how the uh, collected uh, cookie declarations are split up by category, we see a lot more advertising cookies. And this reinforces that uh, cookies are really mostly used for tracking. Now to be able to train the classifier, uh, well, each cookie is, is by itself just textual data and we need to transform this into numerical features. So we, this uh, was not done in uh, prior work and we defined over 50 different extraction step, steps. The full list can be found in our paper and I will give you two examples. So uh, the first is the entropy of the cookie value. So the entropy identifies randomness. The higher the entropy, the higher the randomness and this could help uh, the predictor identify unique identifiers and unique identifiers are of course often uh, are used for tracking. A second example feature are content encodings. So we often identify JSON, com comma separated values, and base64 encodings as also as separate features, which could also help uh, the predictor identify the context. So for training the model, we used the XGBoost algorithm because it was one of the best performing among different approaches that we tried, and it also achieved great performance in previous applications for uh, classifying, yeah, for, uh, yeah, classifying uh, data. And as a baseline, we used the Cookiepedia repository, which is a database of cookies that, uh, that was manually assigned to purposes by human experts. And so also Cookiepedia records roughly uh, categories for approximately 70% of our data set. Uh, in the evaluation, we can see that uh, um, the performance of Cookiepedia, uh, we compare the performance of Cookiepedia to our best XGBoost model. And the performance, the balance accuracy of our model is 84.2%. Almost, which compared to the 84.7% of Cookiepedia shows that the classif our classifier can predict purposes almost as well as uh, human experts. And here you can also see that while Cookiepedia is maybe more accurate is at classifying necessary cookies, our classifier is far more accurate for advertising cookies and thus may give a higher privacy guarantee. So as the final step, we integrated the model into our browser extension, CookieBlock, and CookieBlock, when you install it, it only asks users once, instead of being asked on every website. Afterwards, once the user has defined which purposes he accepts, uh, the, the extension predicts purposes for all cookies that arrive, and those that are rejected are immediately removed. 
Now, so cookie block is already, a, we made this available for users on major web, uh, so yeah, the major browsers, but we know, we uh, managed to, so we identified a main challenge with this actually. So there, there are, Necessary cookies may now also be mis, uh, also misclassified because the classifier is not completely accurate in all cases. And this can cause websites to break, of course. And we try to evaluate how serious this issue is by looking at 100 different randomly sampled websites. 85 of the websites worked without any issues. But we found that the authentication was broken on seven websites. And on another seven, we found that uh, the consent pop-up were reappearing, even if the user accepted them or clicked on a button. And on a single website, we found issues with uh, language changes. So to mitigate this problem, uh, we implemented functionality so that users can grant exceptions to websites so that the cookies from that website are no longer removed. We can also uh, or we also support the, um, an exception list which users can uh, report broken uh, sites and we will, and we uh, define these cookies as necessary so the, the websites no longer break. Finally, with the data we collected in our crawl, we were able to perform a GDPR compliance analysis on the web. And here we defined six novel methods, uh, which we list in this bar chart. We will not go over all of the, I will not go over all of them in detail because of time constraints, but here are some of them. So first we, uh, um, Google Analytics cookies are of course very well known. They are used for analytics, uh, but still many websites misclassify them, 8.2% of the uh, websites we analyzed. And on 2.7% even, these are classified as uh, necessary by the websites. And this was actually even ruled as a GDPR violation in a previous court case, uh, the Planet 49 case. So we are pretty sure that this, these are, uh, yes, GDPR violations. We also, again, here have the undeclared cookies, cookies that were never listed in the consent notice. and. We found these on a surprising 82.5% of all websites and overall 40% of all cookies that we found were undeclared. Moreover, we examined previously applied uh, analyses, which are um, cookies that were set prior to the user's consent and also cookies that were set despite the user rejecting consent. And we found those on almost 70% of the websites and 21% uh, of the websites respectively, which is higher than what was previously indicated in prior work. So finally, in this histogram, you can see the number of websites that have this exact number of different violation types of what we an analyzed. And here we see that only 5.3% of, of the websites show no potential violations. This again justifies the need for our extension for client-side uh, categorization of, and removal of those cookies. So, and this concludes the presentation. To summarize, cookie consent notices are absolutely broken, and if we want to address this, we need to address this at the client side. To do so, we crawled a large training data set of cookies. We extracted, the, extracted their features, trained a classifier, and integrated this into a browser extension. And we found that on almost 95% of our websites, there were potential GDPR violations. Now, thank you for your attention, and oh yeah, and actually on this QR code, you can actually download uh, all our artifacts, source code, and even the browser extension itself. Feel, feel free to ask me or my co-author, Karl Kubicek, who is also here, uh, any questions if you have them. Thank you for listening. <laughs>